fingertips, and we need to use that in our recruiting. He's done a fantastic job with that, getting the players to buy into his system and understand what they do have at Georgia Tech in terms of facilities, players, system. They are looking like they are trending up right now. And, you know, we heard what Coach Halfley said after his team took it on the chin against Virginia Tech last week. Coach Collins at halftime of the Clemson game when they were down 52-7 to said, I loved you when you were beating Louisville last week, and I love you just as much losing to the number one team in the country. Just keep fighting. And that's what they did in the second half. And hope springs eternal. It's an all-new game today. Boston College won the coin toss, and they deferred to the second half, getting hyped in Chestnut Hill for the start of this one. Toe meets Leather Brothers and Sisters, and we are underway. And it'll be taken out of the end zone. Dante Smith brings it out. He's just about the 20-yard line. That's where we'll get a chance to see Jeff Sims, this dynamic freshman quarterback for Georgia Tech. Yeah, and they love Jeff Sims. They, they understand that he is a true freshman, but he's so level-headed. He's got big family support around him, and he's just able to be plugged into this offense he is very accurate with the football last week kind of skewed some of the numbers but this is a guy that they're very excited about Jeff Collins thinks that he might be the best quarterback in the ACC in the next couple years at the mesh point just couldn't quite connect Whoa. with Jameer Gibbs and that play was blown up by Brandon Barlow oh my goodness they, I mean there could have been a false start or something but I mean there was a miscommunication right off the bat somewhere but Brandon Barlow got in Personal there just foul, ripped a helmet off grabbing the helmet opening yeah, it's, Defense. A, it's a good call but it's uh, first down not good in terms of the first sign for Georgia Tech you got to be able to block Brandon Barlow off the edge Barlow was in there before Sims could even make the connection with Gibbs but fortunately for Georgia Tech and unfortunately for Barlow and BC it's a 15-yard penalty giving Tech a fresh set of downs. How about, I'm sure Jeff Collins and the company, how about a restart? Let's just start right now on this play. Forget that last one even happened. And another flag. Let's restart again, Chris. Yeah, now we have to restart again after a false start. False start, offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, first down. Zach Quinney, the veteran of this offensive line group, one of those position groups that really had to make the the transition from the option-based offense of Paul Johnson to more of a pro style that Jeff Collins, pro style spread that Jeff Collins wants to run. The give to Gibbs. Uses a block nicely, but loses his footing. He had some room to roam. Oh, he did. And he, he, you know, he clapped his hands together because he knew if he had gotten past that, that offensive lineman that he got tripped up on, he would have been gone, but... Yeah, I think when you take a look at the players that Georgia Tech has on their team, they, they return a lot of playmakers on the outside. Look for Marion Brown to get more involved throughout this game. Sims uses a check off and finds his receiver down in the Boston College territory. And right on cue, Mark, there's a Marion Brown. Isn't it so nice for us at broadcasters when it works out like that? But watch Jeff Sims sit in the pocket. I mean, that's a clean pocket. Step right up, and that's a tough throw over the safety Jamin Muse's head. And they talked about wanting to get Brown involved early in this game. You see the first throw downfield is to him. Sims tucks it to run. Trying to get a block outside. Gets a good one from Malachi Carter on the edge. And that really strung him for the big game. Oh, Malachi Carter had a fantastic block. You know, Boston College is known for playing man-to-man. -man. They play single high safety. A lot of man on the outside. But with a mobile quarterback like Jeff Sims, we asked him, Lekabu, Lukabu, whether he'd in, in, you know, do more zone defense so the eyes are on the quarterback. The first couple passing plays have been zone out of Boston College. Give to Gibbs. He'll pick up three, and that's enough for a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Talked about Jameer Gibbs in the open, but... You're just a really fantastic running back. And, and when we talked to Jeff Collins, like, you know, how did you get this guy? I mean, he had a fantastic senior season in high school, but he said we recruited him early before everyone else, and he wanted to come to us, stay in his hometown, home state of Georgia. Sims under a lot of pressure, just well, dangerously gets rid of it, and they're going to lose even more yardage because of it. Sims was in trouble and just somehow got it to Gibbs, but it's going to be an even greater loss. 
Yeah, they're trying to make something happen. As Predio pressure has just gotten in the backfield really fast. Right there, that's number 11, Sheeta Salah, who got Ooh. there. I mean, it, that's a dangerous play. And, you know, if, if you have watched Boston College last week, Bill Dracovic tried the same sort of thing, resulted in a fumble and a turnover versus Virginia Tech. Georgia Tech is lucky that that didn't result in the same thing. What the result was, was a big loss. It's now second down and 23, this first drive of the game for the Yellow Jackets. Our referee today, Jerry Magalanis. Consult with the other officials, making sure that the clock is right. And we're ready to scrimmage. Good look at Sims. True freshman at Jacksonville. Pass out of the gun underneath to Gibbs. He doesn't have very far to go, though. Nice job defensively by the Eagles, limiting him to a short gain. Looked like Jamon Muse was up on from a safety spot to make the tackle. Yeah, and Chris, you know, just this area of the field, usually field goal range type area, but talk, you know, talk to these guys a little bit about just the problems that Georgia Tech has had in their kicking game. You know, they didn't even know who the kicker was going to be before the game started because they just have been so poor. Third and long for Jeff Sims and this Yellow Jacket team. Jordan Mason in a tailback for Georgia Tech. He hadn't played since the Florida State game, so good for the Yellow Jackets to see him. Completion on the pitch and catch to Jalen Camp. It'll be short of the first down, but it might give Georgia Tech an opportunity here to try for three. It'll be interesting to see if Jeff Collins sends that out. I mean, look, I think this could be four down territory, and he is keeping his offense on the field. Fourth and eight is a long way to go. That would be a 41-yard kick if they were to attempt it here. Tech is going for it, or at least they're showing that they're going to go for it. Maybe trying to draw BC offside. And they are going for it, but they'll have to do it from five yards further back. Mistakes now plaguing this Tech team when it looked like they had something going All on the opening drive. Offense, number 54, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, Chris, you talk about penalties early. They have 25, coming in today, 25 offensive penalties through five games. That's the most in the ACC and second in the nation only to UCF. So they are, I know that's something that Jeff Collins wants to get rid of, but they are trending in the direction of living up to that standard right now. Do you attempt a 46-yard kick here? I, I think you might punt it, especially with Harvin, the punter, who can pin guys deep. It's a good look at Presley Harv in the third. The jersey, I'm not sure. second and third. Looks like you with that Smedium on, Chris, showing off the guns. <laughs> Hopefully in a different way. It's a fake. He's going for it all to the end zone. Incomplete. Josh Blancata was the intended receiver. And they've done that fake successfully before. This season with Harvin throwing the football. You see Harvin's athletic ability. That was a nice pass. It was just defended well. It was a good pass, but you see Boston College defense stayed on the field and the punt safe. The ball goes up and was played. Didn't get it. Defended nicely by BC. Now let's take a look at Safe Flowers on the jet sweep. Brought down after a gain of nine. That time David Curry in on the stop, but a good gain on first down for the Eagles. Uh, and, you know, Boston College is known for this motion at the snap. They lead the ACC and someone in motion at the snap. And this is one of the options. Zay Flowers on the jet sweep. He is uh, he's a speedy guy, able to make a lot happen in open space. Good job by Curry to stop him before that broke big. David Bailey in the backfield with Jakovic. Give to the big back. He'll pick up the first down. Fumble on the foot, fumble on the field, and it looks like it was recovered by Georgia Tech in BC territory, and it was. And Georgia Tech recovers it. I mean, Boston College could, could not have talked more about holding on to the football this past week when we talked to the coaches. Last week they had three fumbles, two interceptions, five turnovers, really killed their drives early in the game and let's see if this ball comes out before his knee hits down 
It's a very close call. Obviously, the ruling on the field is a fumble. And Boston Wesley College Walker for Georgia Tech picked it up. Sorry, Mark. No, it's gone. But your Boston College had a few of these. Uh, almost fumbles be reviewed and turn and you know overturned the where they've the gotten the ball back. Recovered ball back. by the defense, Georgia Tech. The previous so play we, is under further review. So we'll see if this knee looks like the knee hits right there. And then the ball pops out. So yeah, a couple of weeks ago, overturned. there's the ball right there. The play official while we were away, the call was overturned. Originally on the field, it was ruled a fumble by David Bailey. Replay official Steve McBride overturning this mark and giving the ball back to BC. I think it's the right call. Looks like the knee's down before the ball comes out. But, you know, either way, Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Boston College, has to be worried about ball security. Three fumbles last week, another fumble, close fumble today. Let's see if they shy away from the run game, which... That's kind of been the trend throughout Boston College games throughout the year. After the overturning, ball was placed back at the 43. It's second down and seven. That fumble occurred on a first down. Travis Levy now the ball carrier. He gets some room and gets into Georgia Tech territory in a first down. Yeah, Levy's a guy they're, they're happy to have back. He was injured for, for a few games earlier in the season, was back last week at seven rushes, five receptions, but he's kind of the, the tweener back. You know, he's a guy who can line up in the backfield, in the dot, right behind the quarterback, take a handoff, but also line up in the slot uh, and go out for receptions. He's a very dynamic, dual-threat player. Flowers in motion to the top of the screen. Now back. BC staying with that run game, picks up a couple. Jamon Brooks, number zero in the middle of that pile. Anytime you see a Georgia Tech player with a single digit number, it's a very special thing for Jeff Collins and company. Players have to earn those single digits. And when you're a defensive tackle and you're wearing zero, that's a really special thing. Yeah, it is. And that, you know, that's, that's probably the biggest zero in all of college football right there on that jersey. Uh, but he deserves it. I mean, he, they call him the silent assassin because he doesn't say much but he shows it on the field. Second and seven for the Eagles. Fake stretch play. Jakovic, he's under pressure. Over the middle, hits his tight end. He's wide open. Hunter Long making his 36th catch of the year. And that'll be another first down for BC. 36th catch of the year. He's the number one targeted tight end in the entire country. And he's able to do just that. You know, he's not going to beat you with huge speed or great moves, but he finds his space in the zone coverage and sets down and provides a big target for his quarterback to get him the ball. Tech DC Andrew Thacker said he had he has dominant hands. He catches everything that is thrown to him, and he has Boston College now set up from the Georgia Tech 28 to give the Levy. Runs right into Quest Jackson. Still picks up about three or four. You know, I think coming into the season, we thought we'd see a ton of David Bailey, number 26, the big back who did not fumble earlier, but it was a close call. But you know, I think it, as this offense has progressed, it's been a guy you know, who just hasn't had the number of carries. Every time we talk to Frank Sinetti, he says, look, I need to get Bailey the ball more. He is a great player, and we are not utilizing him to our potential as of yet. Double tights for Boston College. Here's Bailey, gets through a hole and bounces it outside. Couldn't spin away from the tackle of Samari Walton, the cornerback. But he was able to pick up a first down. Yeah, great blocking up front. You see number 80 pulling back around. Hunter Long got the lead block. And David Bailey, I mean, just when he gets his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and running downhill, he is as hard to tackle as anybody. Good job getting him down on that play by Georgia Tech. Yeah, let's not forget he had 844 yards and seven touchdowns rushing behind A.J. Dillon last year at Boston College. Eagles now in the red zone, Tech showing blitz. Levy gets through that first wave. Gets jacked up pretty good by Jalen King, but another big chunk of yardage on the ground for the Eagles. You know what you don't see in college football? Quarterback under center, back at seven yards behind him, and them running the inside zone play. It just doesn't happen anymore. And Boston College creates something for the defenses to prepare for that's different. It's unusual. And when this offensive line can play well together, they can have running games like they've showed so far in this game. 
Flowers in motion. Coven to his right. Gets it to Levy inside the 10, but he's tracked down. Maybe give him a yard or two. Wesley Walker was there to bring him down. Wesley Walker's a guy who, he's a bigger, bigger guy in that nickelback position. He's had a couple good plays today, but I've loved watching his energy as this season has gone along. I mean, he's a guy who is going 100% every single play. And it's that buy-in. It's that buy-in that Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator, loves from this team in only the second year with them. Wesley Walker, redshirt freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. You'll hear freshman, redshirt freshman, sophomore a lot with this Georgia Tech team. A lot of young players playing. Second down and goal. Looks like it might be a free play for Jakovic. Sidesteps the rush to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. C.J. Lewis gives B.C. the early lead. Let's check the flag to make sure. Offside, defense number 42. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. This is a heads-up play, Chris, by Alec Lindstrom. They call him Rick. He's the center. He sees the defensive end jump off sides and snaps it automatically at that moment to his quarterback, knowing that they will have a free play. That's not something that centers all across the league do just naturally. That has to be taught and coached. And what a great throw and great catch by C.J. Lewis to get a touchdown. It wasn't bad coverage by Walton, and you saw that Dracovic just threw that off his back foot and placed it right where it had to be. Blueberry with the it. point after try. A lot of laundry here early, Mark. A lot of flags. False start offense, mm. number 89. Five-yard penalty remains try down. Can't blame the crowd noise. There's C.J. Lewis getting the congratulations from his teammates. Former Tennessee commit. He committed as a quarterback to play for the Vols. Has made that switch nicely the receiver here for the Eagles who married to try it again and he's true again BC seven to nothing over Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets failed on their first offensive possession Eagles didn't march all the way down the field and CJ Lewis with the touchdown grab what can the Jackets do now when they get the ball back stay tuned we'll be right back to drive for Boston College their first offensive possession of the game, mixing it up. Seven rushes, three passes. Lewis with the touchdown catch, seven to nothing. Eagles on top. Dante Smith lets this one go over his head. Tech will take over the 25. College football continues tonight on the ACC Network. At 8 o'clock, Virginia takes on Miami for our ACC Network primetime game presented by Geico. You can catch it right here on the ACC Network, also on that ESPN app. You know, De'Ara King is Miami's quarterback. He had four touchdown passes last week. What about Virginia? Still trying to figure out their situation and uh, being mum, as you would expect, on the health of the quarterbacks in that room. So it'll be interesting to watch how that game progresses tonight after our game at 8 o'clock. We're just getting started here, though, from Alumni Stadium as the Yellow Jackets and Jeff Sims look to respond quickly to the outside. Receiver can't hang on. That's Malachi Carter. Kelsey Riggs is down on the field. What do you got, Kels? Well, guys, I'm standing over here by Boston College's side right now, and the defense was totally locked in while their offense was out on the field. Max Richardson cheering them on the whole time. And then it was actually their defensive line coach, Vince Ogabasi, who said, hey, don't get too happy. Play with an edge. We need to go out there now and make a play. And, hey, look at that. Right on cue, they, guys. They right do. Right on cue. Marcus Valdez, team captain with the fumble recovery. And every play that Boston College is making, Mark, Georgia Tech is certainly helping them out. Yeah, no, they, they are, and, you know, it's, it's a, a botched exchange between Sims and the running back, and you don't want to put balls in the ground, and I think we, you know, the, the inability for the offensive line to, to allow this pressure right away, it seems pretty consistent. Defensive ends are doing up and under moves on these offensive tackles and having free runs at the quarterback, so as Jeff Sims puts the ball in the belly of Jameer Gibbs, and there's a defender right in his face, I mean, it's just... It's a hard, it's a, it's a hard handoff to make. It's a whole hard pull read to make. But great turnover, great job jumping on the ball by Marcus Valdez. Bailey. Gang tackled by Georgia Tech. Nice pickup though on first down. I'm not even sure on that last play that Sims was even able to get the ball down to the mesh point. 
of Gibbs. I think he just he just fumbled it before he could even get it down to that mesh point. Yeah, the, you know the snap was a little bit high, so he had to bring it you know from his face level down. And by the time he did that, Marcus Valdez had already beat Zach Quinney on the inside and was right in his face. So Phil Dracovic in Boston College looking to really turn the screws on the Yellow Jackets, and they'll have to move back five yards. All star offense, number 84, five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's on Taji Johnson, a true freshman wide receiver who, you know, we talked to Zay Flowers earlier in the week, and he said, Look, we think, I think this guy is ready to go. He is a playmaker. If you have pre snap penalties, it's going to be tough to get on the field. He probably knows a lot of players on this Georgia Tech team as well. Taji Johnson, the freshman out of Powder Springs, Georgia, suburb of Atlanta. Tech brings four, but they get pressure. Jacobic has to get rid of it. It does to Lewis again inside the 10 down to the four. Phil Jakovic is so good with his eyes. Look, first option gone, second option gone. He's able to scramble away from the pressure and find C.J. Lewis. And C.J. Lewis, I mean, so far in this game, he's had a fantastic game, but he's been emerging as a playmaker. He was a high school quarterback. And he was like big man on campus. I think it took a little while for him to accept that role as wide receiver, not having the ball in his hands every play. But so far in this game, he has been outstanding. Travis Levy now flanking Dracovic. He'll get the carry. He gets met. Curry coming up in that middle linebacker spot. Buries him for a loss. I love David Curry. Just watching him play. I mean, fifth-year senior. He's been through it all through the coaching change. And watch him scrape over top. I mean, that's that's really solid linebacker play. You see a pull, you follow the pull, and just find the first open space and hit whatever is there. I mean, he's a guy who studies tons of film, and that was, you know, really, really solid linebacker play. Dead buddy Curry, Falcon, for a number of years. Curry in his sixth year at Georgia Tech. Down again, that's Lewis again. Well, they got something going, something's clicking, and uh, Dracovic, yep, a lot of throws to Zay Flowers throughout the year, a lot of throws to Hunter Long throughout the year, and, and the emergence of another big wide receiver. You know, it was Jalen Gill last week, this week it's C.J. Lewis, and, and when we talked to Frank Signetti about how the distribution works in terms of who gets the ball, he says it's all pattern read. You read the first guy, if he's not open, you go to the second guy, and Right there, C.J. Lewis was the third guy, the third read on that play, and he was open right in the middle of the end zone for a huge touchdown. It's two to Mary him makes him, it 14 him. to nothing, and Mark, the last time these two teams met, if Tech can take some sauce, it could be that they broke out early in that game, and Boston College fought all the way back and almost got the win. Remember this game in Ireland, 2016? Tech's oh, third man. straight win. They got the lead. John Hilleman almost, with this great run, gave the victory to Boston College. But Georgia Tech came back, and interestingly enough for the Yellow Jackets, a fellow by the name of Diedrich Mills scored a touchdown that looked like it might be the game winner late in this game. Diedrich Mills scored a touchdown today. Here he is when he was a freshman. He scored one today for Nebraska in their loss to Ohio State. But Tech also got a late field goal from Harrison Butker, who is now the kicker for the Chiefs, and they got the win. Different story here today, though. BC with an early lead. Jeff Collins has got to figure something out on every all sides of the football including special teams yeah no he really does and you know they'll the, take the shot early obviously they don't they don't have a lot of confidence in their field goal kicker they had a pretty decent drive going got towards the red zone and then threw that fake punt after a huge loss on first down but really just nothing has been going georgia tech's away this entire game and they need to shore up their their offense and their defense dante smith takes that danny longman kick takes a knee Tech from their own 25 and the one thing about Jeff Sims that the coaches talk about is just how even keeled he is even for a true freshman now we're on the road down 14 after he turned the football over let's see how even keeled he is taking this Yellow Jacket team out there for the third time this afternoon yeah and he's a guy I mean 
I think when you look at freshmen, sometimes you're so naive, you just you don't know to be upset. But I, I don't think that's him. I think he just has poise. He has composure. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why he's two-time ACC Rookie of the Week so far this year. But you know, he's a guy. He can he can bring them back. He really can. And he can bring him back with his legs, make some move. Nice carry on first down. Kelsey has more on Sims. Yeah, I actually caught up with Jeff Sims before the game, and I talked to him about last week, and he says, look, I am a sore loser. Last week hurt me. I was mad for a solid three days, but we are so focused in on this Boston College team now. And he also told me the other thing that he's tired of, you guys, is we can't help it. We talk about the fact that he's a freshman and everything that he's he's doing. He said, look, I'm just a college football player. That's what I want to be known as. Hard not to point out that he's a freshman when he's doing things like he's started so far at Boston at uh, Georgia Tech. Gibbs try to bounce outside. Beautiful play defensively by Jason Matry cutting down Gibbs for a loss. Yeah, good play by Jason Matry. Really cuts off this play because he... It, Good pin block on, on Maximilian Richardson, but Matry just came out of that nickel position and chopped down Jameer Gibbs, setting up a third and four after that loss. Yeah, second and inches to third and four. Tech really needs to convert here to prevent having to put that defense back on the field. Sims looks to do it himself. And he's close, but I don't think he got there. He's going to come up about a yard shy. And Maximilian Richardson, the middle linebacker for this Boston College team looks like he did stop him short and lead blocker coming up on the middle linebacker was able to shed the blocker and get the quarterback down short of the marker and gonna bring out Harvin again for the Georgia Tech punt first time Harvin took the field he threw a beautiful pass but now we get a chance to see what he does best he has a booming leg over 48 yards per punt this year that's second in the NCAA and he gets a good leg into this one Fair catch made at the 14. And that's where Boston College will take over once again. Sunday, catch a quadruple header of women's Olympic sports at noon Eastern. Wake Forest and Duke in field hockey. Then Notre Dame and Louisville in women's soccer. Top 10 matchup has Louisville and Pitt in volleyball. And then wrapping things up, number 14, Duke taking on Virginia Tech in volleyball. That's Sunday best all day long on the ACC Network. That's what we do in the fall. We bring you football all day on Saturday and then a cavalcade of sports on Sunday. Flowers in motion. The give is to Levy. Gets a little over two before he's brought down. Levy, you mentioned how he was hurt early in the season and so you had basically Bailey and Pat Garwo carrying the load, but Levy does so much for him. He gives them their juice. That's what the coaches were saying. He gives them just an influx of that, both catching the ball, running the football, but he's really the emotional leader. Yeah, they said he's the best leader on the entire offense. So having him out of the game, you know, not only hurt them in terms of yards, but in terms of leadership. Jakovic with a lot of room to run up the middle. He have the first down and a lot more, showing his athleticism near midfield before Tariq Carpenter tracks him down. It's funny because he looks slow. Like, he looks slow because he has such long legs, but he's fast. I mean, you know, he's running away from guys. No one's catching him. Uh, yeah, that's Tariq Carpenter who, who, who's chasing him down from behind, but look at this hole. I mean, you know, Georgia Tech's in man-to-man -man coverage. They know Dracovic can run the ball there, and man-to-man, -man, all their backs are turned to the quarterback. When that happens, big gains like that are possible from that quarterback position. Now under center, the fake to Levy. Dracovic has time, gets it out to Levy in the flat. Just can't work his way away from the defender, but he was still able to pick up three yards. Pardon me, David Bailey, the running back. That'll be the end of the first quarter, a quarter dominated by Boston Cutter and Chris Cotter. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Kurtzlick, of course, father of young Boston, who I'm sure is running around the house. One eye on this game, one eye on, well, who knows what type of mischief. Tons of mischief. I'm sure there's zero eyes on this game for him and uh, lots of eyes on things he can throw because he is a big thrower. As <laughs> is Phil Jakovic. <laughs> Although he's, he hasn't had to throw that much today because they have been able to establish the run early on against this Georgia Tech defense. 
Yeah, you know, they came in today last in yards per rush at 2.1 yards per rush. In that first quarter, they're averaging over seven yards time per out. rush. Georgia Tech, their first time out of the half. Georgia Tech calling a timeout here in the second quarter. Full media timeout. Chestnut Hill, Mass. At Alumni Stadium, Boston College up on Georgia Tech, 14 to zero. Two teams, two and two in league play coming into this game. And when you look at who they've got next, Georgia Tech taking on Notre Dame next week on ABC Boston College at Clemson. That's the noon game on ABC, so it doesn't get any easier for both these clubs from here on out. Pressure up the middle, Dracovic escapes it and floats it to a wide open Lewis. 25, still on his feet, down to the 20, another red zone opportunity for BC. Chris, we got to look at that one again. I don't even know what happened to David Curry on that play. I mean, he got got directly through. We're not going to be able to do it now because they're going so hurry up, but just missed the sack. This TFL not missed. Jordan Dominic in there in a hurry to bring down Levy. Yeah, we look back at that, you know, that that long pass play, but good job blitzing. You see, that's a, that's a missed assignment by Travis Levy. The running back didn't pick up the blitzer, but you know, David Curry just took his shot and ran right by. Looks like like Top Gun. Kovic hit the brakes and Curry flew right by Chris. You like a good Top Gun reference every now and then? Pattern is full, Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> they mark after the TFL. About a four yard loss. Second down and 14. Tech bringing pressure again. Dracovic picks it up. Just misfires to Lewis, who is wide open on the play. See Wanye Thomas directing traffic afterward. Good job by the defense for Georgia Tech to create this third and long situation. You know, missed Zach, a big play downfield, and then all of a sudden it's third and 14, and you're right back in a situation where you can get off the field and get the ball back in your offense's hands. And, you know, how big will it be for Georgia Tech to get Boston College off the field and keep it a two-score game? Big third and 14. Tech brings just four. And that one's going to be well over the head of Zay Flowers. It'll bring up a fourth down field goal kicking opportunity. So Aaron Bumeri kicked a couple extra points in that first quarter for BC. We'll get an opportunity to add three more. The transfer out of Temple. This guy's had to deal with a lot. A couple of hip surgeries in his career. Hoping to finish on a high note this year as a graduate student at BC. And Bumeri splits the uprights. Boston College extends their lead. 17-0 over the Yellow Jackets here. Early second quarter. It's been short tackling. Not one missed tackle yet this game. It's obviously still early, but that is something that Tem Lukabu, the defensive coordinator, wants to build off of. They have harped on it all week. They implemented a tackling circuit in their Tuesday practice. They went full pads on Wednesday as well because it is that important for this team. Georgia Tech just 52 yards of total offense and more than half of that on the opening drive. They have not been able to get anything going since. Danny Longman to kick off for the Eagles after Bumeri's 41-yard kick gave Boston College the 17-0 lead. An opportunity here for Dante Smith. And he's got a lot of room to room. That's Gibbs. That's Gibbs to midfield. Will he beat the kicker? He does. Gibbs is going to go to the house. Well, Chris, Flag that's down one way on to do the it. field. Let's <laughs> check it. Oh, man. That's one way to do it. Let's check the flag. During the return, holding number 45 return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Georgia Tech just cannot get anything to go their way at the present time. Emerson was guilty of holding and it'll wipe out a 98-yard kick return by Gibbs. Well, Chris, you mean 
you just look at what Jameer Gibbs can do, right? You know, we've seen him, you know, catch the ball. We've seen him run the ball. But he's a fantastic kick returner. And, you know, if not for that holding, that would have been a touchdown. Obviously, there it was a holding. It'll call back. But, I mean, it, it just shows his versatility and how dynamic he is as a runner. And, you know, those penalties like that, you know, take points off the board. And Georgia Tech can't have that at a position down 17. Gibbs on the carry, dances his way for about seven yards. That's Mason. Jordan Mason back in the game for the Yellow Jackets. Mason trying to muscle his way into that line and does to pick up an extra yard or two. Ball on the ground, picked up by BC. Inside the 10, and that's going to be a score. Palmer picked it up, and Mike Palmer returns it for a touchdown. Chris, it was almost like everybody stopped playing, and Jeff Collins is mad right now because he thinks the whistle should have been blown as forward progress was stopped. And you always see the running back trying to gain those extra yards, the offensive line pushing him. But in a moment like that, you, you get a situation where the ball comes out right at the end of that play and heads up by Mike Palmer to return that one. There is a flag in the end zone where the touchdown was scored. This one obviously, as all scores are, will be looked at by the replay official, Steve McBride, but Coach Collins unhappy with what just transpired. You could understand. The officials are talking things over right now. As it stands, Mike Palmer picked up that fumble and rumbled for the score. The ruling on the field yards. was a fumble recovered by the defense, Boston College, returned for a touchdown. After the play, there are several unsportsmanlike conducts against Boston College. The previous play is under further review. As our replay official, Steve McBride, takes a look at this one, a long, hard look at it. We'll take a quick break. Here's one last look before we do go to break. We'll give you the decision. we come putting the ball on the carpet, and it just emerges from the pile. Mike Palmer picks it up and goes 34 yards for the score. Officials are reviewing whether it was indeed a fumble. Let's hear from Jerry After Magdalenas. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. After the play, there are several unsportsmanlike conduct fouls on Boston College, each their first of the game. Number 44, number 14, and number three. That 15-yard penalty, only one 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Barlow, Richardson, and Jason Matry guilty of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against BC, but all the damage was already done with the return for the score, and Georgia Tech just cannot catch a break at this present time. Chris, you know, we looked at it, at the, the replay of that fumble a few times during the break, and just not really, there was so many bodies around the football, couldn't really tell when the knee was down, when the ball came out, and so I think there was not enough evidence to overturn the call on the field. But either way, heads up play by Mike Palmer to Offside. scoop it up and, and run until someone blew the whistle. Penalties declined. The try is good. Well, Jeff Collins needs to use some of that motivational magic with this Yellow Jacket team again. Tried it last week against Clemson when they were down big at the half, and now they're down big here in the first half on the road at BC. And they need to figure something out. Number one, they got to quit turning the ball over. They forced a lot of turnovers this year, Mark. The problem is they've given it away even more than they forced. Yeah, they have, and they're negative in that turnover margin, turnover ratio. You you know, you shoot to be positive. You want to try to have to gain three turnovers a game. It, it makes your winning percentage so much greater. But you know, when we talk to any of these college coaches each week, the the single stat, the single most important stat, is who wins the turnover battle. And so far, I mean, Georgia Tech has been on the losing end of this one. Longman will kick off from his own 20 after the unsportsmanlike penalty was marched off. 
Gibbs had a return for a score called back because of a penalty on the last kickoff. Let's see what he can do here as he takes it from his own 24. And Georgia Tech will at the very least here have good field position to start this drive near midfield. Time for food lion, food for thought. And Mark, last year, Marion Brown in his true freshman year had seven touchdown catches. That tied Calvin Johnson's freshman mark at Georgia Tech. This year, zero scores, and so far today, just the one catch. Coaches from both sides both said when we talked to him during the week, we got to get number two. Georgia Tech said we got to get number two involved, and Boston College said we got to circle number two and find him. Yeah, they want to know where number two is at all times. Just not enough plays. I mean, Georgia Tech really hasn't had the opportunity to run a bunch of passing plays. Uh, just, you know, they only have 14 total plays run so far in this game. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number 21. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play, first down. The and previous play is under Josh further DeBerry. review. They'll review this one, but DeBerry is one of those emerging players in this Boston College secondary targeting call on Sims. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I'm not exactly sure what Jeff Sims is trying to do there. It looks like, I mean, it, it kind of finishes the play like he's sliding. It, it started the play, looked like he was ducking his head. So there was, really, they're going to have to determine whether he was a defenseless player when that hit. Sims going for it all. As a receiver in the end zone, that's Brown, and he scores. <laughs> well, what a way to respond and utilize that penalty. Marion Brown, we just showed the food line, food for thought before this. They needed to get him the ball more, and right off the big penalty, clean pocket for Jeff Sims, and a perfect ball in the back of the end zone. Watch the offensive line. Protect, perfect ball towards the corner of the end zone, and that's against Brandon Sebastian. A very good and productive cornerback for Boston College, but laid in the there perfectly. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. The previous play Brown. is under further review. Brown with his first touchdown of the season. And we just talked about how he had seven last year. He was really their most explosive player. Boston College defensive coaches think he is again this year. And he showed it on this play. Let's see if he got a foot in. Ooh, that now that's close. Good. Is the ball moving? The left foot is in there. Does he have complete control? Or does he not get it until that right foot go hits down? I say he has complete control. They, they, they clarified the rule a few years ago where if you are pinning the ball against your body with your arm or, or with you know a hand or a leg or something like that, and the ball does not move in terms of make a, a jolted move afterwards, that is possession at the point that the ball is clamped between your hand and the body, and then, you know, he does get a firmer grasp on the ball after that. But I think that this is going after to stand. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It more than stands, it is confirmed. Amarian Brown gets Georgia Tech right back in at lightning quick. At least the offense can feel that they can actually do something here and put some points on the board. That's got to give them a little bit of confidence early in this second quarter. Gavin Stewart now for the point after try, and this is anything but automatic. A little bit of a high stat, but Stewart puts it right through the uprights, and Georgia Tech now down 17 after the long pitch and catch to Amari and Brown. Yeah, and Tim Lukabu, the Boston College defensive coordinator, you know, he's going to be kicking himself. You know, when you look at the scouting report for Amari and Brown, you said this guy has unbelievable speed. He can literally, he can run by anybody on the field. And so I think you know, they got into a, an almost too deep look, but got behind the corner, and it was too late for the safeties to rotate over top of them. And, I mean, perfect ball placement by Jeff Sims. Uh, and, you know, I think that connection, right? Amarion Brown is a true sophomore. Jeff Sims is a true freshman. You're going to see a lot more of that Sims to Brown connection as these years progress and they develop in this Jeff Collins offense. That on sportsmanlike call coming back to haunt Boston College, too, because it gave Georgia Tech a short field. And when you're an offense struggling, that's certainly 
music to your ears when you know you don't have to go 80 75 yards for a score and Georgia Tech took full advantage of it Jude Kelly will the onside kick this no yeah they do try it on the right side and Boston College is Johnny on the spot to pick it up we do have a flag on the play as Tate Haynes was there to recover it I have a feeling we're going to see pretty much everything in this kicking game. Kicking team, number eight, five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. The onside kick fails. Boston College not only recovers, but they get an additional five yards. Now they're set up in business. Yeah, they are. They, you know, they have a short field. And look at Tate Haynes, number seven. This is exactly how you want to field an onside kick. When you you see the ball right there, don't wait for it to go ten yards. Attack it. Yet, yes, the. Kicking team cannot touch it until 10 yards. But we also saw at the beginning of the season in the NFL that didn't work out so well for uh, the returning team in, in that game. And Cowboys recovered an outside kick, or they were they were defending it. Fake to Bailey, pressure up the middle. Kovic is flushed, and he just has to throw this one away. Chris, you're starting to feel a little momentum on Georgia Tech's side. That you know, that that penalty was was huge. Uh, you got one of your you know, the, the opposition's best defensive backs off the field. You follow that right back up with a with a long ball to your wide receiver that you want to get going, and then a big stop on first down. And I mean, this would be huge for Georgia Tech defensively to be able to stop Boston College and hold them to at least a field goal. Flowers in motion. Kovic rolling to his right, back to Flowers. He's got blockers in front of him. Big old number 72 out there, leading the way for Flowers, and it's a first down. So here's my question to you as we see this play again, Mark, is if you are getting a little bit of momentum with that score for Georgia Tech, don't you kick off and make Kovic go the length of the field? You just gave him a short field. Now he's picked up a first down. They're already in field goal range. Agreed. I do agree with that. I think that you, you let your defense play. I... I think you know, Jeff Collins is pulling out all the stuff. When you saw the fake punt early, you saw the onside kick. I mean, I think that he he believes that they need to have some difference-making plays on special teams in order to beat this Boston College team. Levy. Dances his way for a pickup of about three. Antonius Clayton, the transfer from Florida, there to make the stop. I see Boston College is continuing to run the ball. I mean, line up with Phil Dracovic, under center, turn around, hand the ball off. When you can pick up four yards on first down running the ball, I mean, you are ahead of the sticks. You are right in sync with where you want to be in terms of downs and distance. Levy again, bounces it outside. Georgia Tech's pursuit gets there, but Levy picks up three. It'll bring up third and short. This is kind of the type of offense that I thought I was going to see from Boston College this entire year. You, know, you line up with the running back behind the quarterback, under center, you hand the ball off, pick up a few yards on first down, pick up a few yards on second down, then use a little play action pass on third down and short. And so far it's been just you know drop back passes, but good to see them sprinkle in the run game more in this game. Flowers on the jet sweep. Curry giving chase, but he won't catch him. Inside the 10, Flowers will go the distance. Well, Zay Flowers leads the ACC in receiving yards, but he can do it on the ground. And we talked earlier in the game about Boston College and Frank Signetti's pro-style offense. He is motioning at the snap of the ball more percentage than any other team in the ACC. And it's for reasons like that. You don't know whether he's going to, Bill Dracovic's going to turn around and hand the ball off to Zay Flowers, whether he's going to fake it to Zay Flowers and throw the throwback screen. You know, both of those things came out of the same formation on this drive, and they're complimentary plays. So Amari Brown with the big play for Georgia Tech and Boston College answers with their own most explosive wide receiver at Zay Flowers as he picks up his fifth touchdown of the season. First one on the ground for him, and that was easy once he turned it inside. Yeah, it was easy turning inside, and yeah, good blocks on the outside. He had two tight ends leading the way, Hunter Long and Spencer Witter. And when you get those big bodies out in front of you, I mean, just it, 
defender stuck on blocks. Good job by Zay to find his way into the end zone. There's Frank Signetti right behind the pole. In the black shirt. Offensive coordinator for Boston College. You know our camera guys, you know, we start talking about Frank Signetti, and they're like, come on, lean back a little bit so I can see your face. <laughs> but, but, and he stays right behind the pole, very nice and convenient. But, you know, Frank Signetti's a guy, he has so much uh, pro history of coaching in the NFL. When I was with the New York Giants, he was the quarterback's coach, and he actually turned down the job of, of being the quarterback's coach for the Dallas Cowboys when Mike McCarthy took over as head coach. And, he said, I want to go back to college. His dad was a college coach, his brother's a college coach, and he missed it. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 20, return team. Half the distance to the goal, penalty, first down. Dante Smith wasn't able to get the ball to the 20, so they'll go half the distance, and Georgia Tech down 24, backed up in the shadow of their own goalpost. Chris, we talked about Travis Levy earlier when he was lined up at running back and his leadership, but he just ran down on kickoff and made a tackle after he had a couple big runs. I mean, he's their most productive running back so far in this game, and he just ran down the field and made a tackle. I mean, that's the type of leadership that he shows. And I, uh, anytime I had a, a guy who was, who was a starter who made a play on special teams, it always got me fired up at least. Georgia Tech is going to have to answer as as Boston College did with a score here with 938 left to go in the second quarter Sims to throw as a receiver open that's going to be a first down Marquez Ezard making the catch in front of Sebastian on that corner spot so a good start for the Yellow Jackets He's showing a little pressure. They come. Picked up nicely. Sims. Dangerous pass as Jalen Camp lost his footing. Yeah, Camp fell down on the play. He came out of his break. But the Tim Lukabu hasn't brought a lot of pressure so far in this game from, you know, from positions outside of defensive line because he's been so successful getting the quarterback. But I think after a couple of those clean pockets, he wants to now make the decisions quicker for Jeff Sims. Gibbs. The short side of the field, nowhere to go. He gets brought down by Brandon Barlow. So a critical third down here for Georgia Tech. They do not want to put that defense back on the field here in the latter half of this second quarter, already down 24. And Jordan Mason checked in at running back. Jameer Gibbs is going to get a break. But you see them going four wide receivers. Sanders come in the game, Adonica Sanders. And see right in the middle of that three wide receiver set is Amarion Brown, number two. Let's see if they look his way. Free play. DC wanted to bring pressure. Yep, it'll be a free play. Sims now going up top. Trying to get it to Carter. And it was knocked away by Brandon Sebastian. But we got to check the flag here to see if Tech will get another opportunity. Offside, defense, number four, five-yard penalty, third down. Max Roberts was just a little over-eager. Get started on his blitz from the outside. After the penalty, third and five for the Jackets. Sims to throw. Has all kinds of time. Gets it to his running back, Mason. And he has a lot of room. 50 inside of BC territory. Makes a move and puts his shoulder down. Great run after the catch by Mason. He's back for the Yellow Jackets. And they're back in business in BC territory. Great play design. Georgia Tech scored on this play versus Louisville a few weeks ago. But that's just an angle route by the uh, running back, Jordan Mason. He's, he's on a linebacker. Linebacker's covering him. He knows he can get that inside leverage. And if you're playing man-to-man -man on a running back as a linebacker, you need to take away the inside of the field. Great job by exposing it by Jeff Sims. Sims again with time. Now to the tight end. Dylan Leonard makes the catch. Just his second catch of the year, but it keeps Georgia Tech now moving with a little momentum. 
Georgia Tech's got tight ends, baby. Yeah, they do. They didn't used to have tight ends. They got tight ends now, and that's a. I like Dylan Leonard. He's a pretty good guy. He's a, he's, a, he's that move tight end and creates a lot of mismatches. Pressure coming on the outside. Sims with a pump fake. Now goes to the end zone as a receiver. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. P.J. Harris, the sophomore from noon in Georgia, with his first touchdown grab of the year. Uh, Jeff Sims read man-to-man -man coverage on the back end, and Mike Palmer, who was covering P.J. Harris, looked like he saw the ball in the air, just misjudged how high it was going to be thrown and tried to undercut it. But fantastic job. And you, you answer a score with a score, drive down the field, and... Putting another touchdown on the board before halftime. Fantastic. Stewart with the PAT. 31-14 our score. Brown's first touchdown catch of the year. Harris's first touchdown catch. Mark, it looks like the pressure that was getting to Sims so easily in the first quarter is being picked up a little bit better by Georgia Tech. Yeah, and Jordan Mason has been in a running back, I think, for that reason. We saw that long run he had but he's been good doing a really good job of picking up some of these blitzers and I was wrong it, it wasn't Mike Palmer on the coverage it was Jason Maytree the nickelback who undercut that throw but I think you're right Boston College brought pressure on that play it was picked up nicely clean pocket for Jeff Sims and he was just able to lay it out in front of his big wide receiver 6 3 2 20 PJ Harris so tech hanging in there Got down so big early in this game, and they've answered the last two Boston College scores with scores of their own. They really need a defensive effort here to give that offense maybe one more shot before going in to the half. Austin Kent will kick off with the Yellow Jackets. Puts his leg into it. Fair catch made by Levy. Hey, every morning on the ACC Network, join Mark Packer and Wes Durham for the latest sports news from all 15 schools in the conference. Great interviews as well. Packer and Durham, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on the ACC Network and also on that ESPN app. Griff, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and quarterback efficiency. I mean, so far in this game, these two quarterbacks have, conv uh, have combined to only miss on three sorry five targets Kovic's eight of 11 and Sims is nine of 11 that's I mean that's accuracy Levy on the carry gets a couple of yards Quez Jackson is there to make the stop Georgia Tech defense, you know, they, they've been playing hard. They've given up some, some big plays. But they are active, and they are, they are so much more active in terms of running to the ball than, than I, I even saw them a year ago, feeling a lot more comfortable in this defense. Jakovic, design run after the fake. Jackson giving chase. Jakovic looks like he picked up the first down, though. Let's see where they mark it. I believe they'll give it to him. Kelsey has more on this Georgia Tech defense. Kels? Well, the whole time that offense was out on the field last play, their defensive coaches were yelling at him saying, hey, it would be really easy to shut it down right now. Stop looking at the scoreboard. They've got 11 guys just like we have at 11 guys. Who's going to go out there and make a play? Well, then we saw this team come down and score. Now Georgia Tech is fired up. The sidelines is louder than I've heard it this whole first half, you guys. Boston College Third down and one. Over. Dracovic didn't get the first down, so he'll have to power his way there this time around and does. Yeah, Boston College lined up in a tackle over set. They brought big Zion Johnson to the other side. And a lot of times when you put a 310-pound guy on one side of the scrimmage, uh, quarterback <laughs> can go that way. And he did. Picked up a first down. Skid on his hip. Follow him right over that line of scrimmage. Clock winding inside of six minutes left to go in this first half. Right at the middle to Bailey. Nice spin move for a big man. 236 pounds, agile. Well, Chris, this is the exact play that Boston College ran last week where Hunter Long ran into Phil Dracovic and he fumbled the ball. 
<laughs> we, just, we talked to Jeff Halfley. He said, you can't, you can't even recreate that happening. And they ran it again. Didn't happen. And big pickup on the ground for David Bailey. BC churning clock and churning yardage here late in the first half. Jakova keeps it again. Turns it upfield. Missed a couple of tackles. Good pickup on first down into Yellow Jacket territory. Whew. Put a little move on David Curry right there. Even that dead leg juke. And yeah, Dracovic's a guy, I mean, 6'5, 230. And when you look at him play, you know, we've made the comparison, other, other people have made the comparison to Big Ben Roethlisberger. And you know, just his ability to control his body, to control the big body when he's under pressure, but also those designed runs. I mean, that's what, that's what really sets him apart. Leads the team so far today with 44 yards on four carries. Goodness gracious, big collision in the backfield, but Levy keeps his feet. And he'll be close to a first down. Quez Jackson tracked him in the backfield along with Trey Swilling. Levy coming up a little bit shy at 200 pounds. He was able to survive that collision in the backfield and pick up what he could. Yeah, we see David, David Curry again at the point of attack. He was the guy who flew in there. But Levy was able to avoid it. And uh, third and two, a lot of options at this point in the field. You want to try to pick up a first down, still out of field goal range for Boston College. Bailey just trying to slam in there, and he's not going to get it, I don't think. No, he's not. He's, he's not going to get it. This could be four down territory, though. Nice just play outside by of Mike Lockhart. Range. I mean, yeah, defensive yeah, front. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I mean, absolutely right. I mean, you have a 240-pound running back running downhill, and you're able to drive your offensive lineman back so much that it stops that big back in the backfield. Fantastic play on third down, and we'll set up fourth and one. Look for quarterback sneak. <laughs> Trying to draw him offside. Flowers in motion, and oh they do. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, as a defender, you, they're all pointing. Your, yeah, you know you got to point. You have to point, uh, right? As a defender, you got it. You got it. Offside you defense point. with contact. Yeah. Five yard penalty, results first down. Wow. Uh, what a the fantastic didn't work. What a fantastic play on third down by that defensive line stopping them. But anytime you see multiple men shifting on the offensive line like that, and then you see another motion, all that the offense is trying to do is mess with your eyes. And when your eyes are not right, then your brain is not right, and you can jump off sides. We used to line up and just say, earmuffs, 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 pretend like you can't hear anything. Good job by Boston College executing. Big play, because BC keeps the ball, and that clock continues to wind down. Bailey just churning those legs. Picks up about four yards. Lockhart again on the stop. Dominic joining him. Halfley has to be happy with this drive, answering yes. Georgia Tech with a drive that is just winding that clock down to the first half and picking up yardage. Yes, and it's running the football. Defensive coaches love when the offense can run the football because it allows their defense to get some rest on the sideline. Levy sidesteps one would-be tackler. Quez Jackson finally runs him down, but it'll bring up another third and short for Boston College. Chris, the last time we saw the consecutive plays of first down, a four-yard run, second down, another three-yard run, creating a third and three. That was the jet sweep to Zay Flowers that scored the touchdown. Really, let's see if Phil Dracovic lines up under center or now he's in the shotgun, so... A lot of options on third and three. Brings Jalen Gill in motion to the top of the formation. Tech coming with five. Nice job defensively by Trey Swilling. And there is a flag down. C.J. Lewis called for it and got it. Pass interference defense number three. That's a spot foul. First down. Jalen Gill, or C.J. Lewis, rather, 
works inside. It's a little slant flat route. One step up the field, cut inside. A little bit of contact on the back. I thought it was pretty good coverage defensively by Trace Willing. Little right arm, maybe. That's what the official spotted. Another first down for BC. All three timeouts on the board for the Eagles. Final minute and 15 of this first half. Dracova gets hit as he throws, but gets it to Gill. Nice move by Gill in the open field. Down it close to the 10-yard line. Where Zamari Walton could make the stop. First time we've mentioned Jalen Gill, the transfer from Ohio State in today's game. Top 30 recruit coming out of high school in Westerville. He's fit in really nicely since transferring here to BC. Nowhere to go that time for BC. And now whistles on the play. As Lee maybe even Boston just barely College, got back to the line of scrimmage. Out of the half. 30 second timeout. BC calling a timeout. That's the second time Boston College has done that, where they've hurried up to the line of scrimmage and run a run a run play, an outside zone play. And to Georgia Tech's defensive line credit, their hands have been in the dirt, ready to go, fired off the ball. And they've had both of those stopped for almost negative plays. Good job, you Collins. Yeah, Jeff Collins like, look, just calm down, stay focused. We're still in this one. You saw Thacker there with the headset on, too. Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. Saw Collins, too, just trying to pump up Trey Swilling. Because you can tell Swilling may be a little bit discouraged after that P.I. Second down and goal for B.C. Tech trying to bow their backs here and at least keep the Eagles out of the end zone. They come with five delayed going to the corner. Jakovic, what a, almost an unbelievable catch by Gill. <laughs> Gill holds up his fingers and goes, that close. It was that close and it was. I mean... I thought the ball was thrown a little bit too high in the situation, but when you can lob it up there, I thought it was going to be out of bounds, but just, I mean, perfectly placed ball. You see Jalen Gill almost coming down with it. And you, you mentioned the fact that he transferred in from Ohio State, and you know, Jakovic, a lot's made of him coming from Notre Dame, but Jalen Gill was a huge acquisition for Boston College in the off in the offseason. This is a huge play in this game right here. If Tech wants to have any shot in the second half, they come with pressure, going to the corner again the flowers and they cannot hook up Walton on the coverage so Tech presumably will force a field goal attempt here from Bumeri yeah and great coverage by Zumari Walton did not bite at all on the little stutter by Zay Flowers and kept man eyes on him the entire time spun him around a little bit but really good defense and you know holding Boston College to a field goal there breathes life into this Georgia Tech team heading into halftime. 27-yard attempt from Bumeri. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is as well. 34-14 with a half minute left to go in this first half. All right, coming up at the State Farm Halftime Report, Jordan Cornett and the crew will be back in studio. We'll recap the first half of our game, plus Clemson pushed early against Syracuse. He may have been able to spread that thing out in the second half. North Carolina, NC State, that rivalry renewed this afternoon as well. Highlights of that one, I'm sure. A whole lot more coming up. State Farm Halftime Report back in the studio. I will say this, Chris. You have a really good job by Georgia Tech defensively in that red zone defensive stand taking away Hunter Long. I mean, Hunter Long has not had his name called very much at all today. Only one reception. And they've, they've covered him well. I mean, they've double teamed him at times. They've played zone over top of him at times. But he was not a factor at all, not even targeted at all in the red zone. And anytime you have a 6'5", 250-pound tight end who leads the country in targets, you'd think they would look his way. Jameer Gibbs is deep. Let's see if he can do something on this return. He cannot. Good coverage by Boston College. And Georgia Tech with just 26 seconds left to go in this first half. 
I would think that they would opt to be very conservative here, Mark. Would you agree with that? Just 26 I, seconds? I totally agree. I mean, there's certain situations in certain games where I love taking a shot, but when you're inside your own 20, you've already turned the ball over multiple times in this game. I mean, you want to just hand it off to number 21 and see if you can break one potentially, but other than that, run the clock out, play for the next half. BC gets the ball to start the second half. Sims looking to throw. Underneath, can't hit Camp. Second down and 10. Well, they decided to throw the ball downfield. Let's see if they change up the philosophy at all, because yeah, you, you run off a, a few seconds each time you do that, about six seconds, but you have more than 12 seconds left if you do decide to punt. Gibbs in the backfield with Sims. Looking to the sideline as they change the play. BC brings just four. Sims scrambling. He'll get what he can before running out of bounds with 10 seconds left to go in this first half. BC with two timeouts. They could call one after this play, Mark, if Tech can't convert it, at least force them to punt. Yeah, and you know, in that situation, you put back your best return guy and just see if he can break one. Or you come after it. I mean, we've seen a lot of blocked punts so far in this football season. Wouldn't be surprised if Boston College tries to block it if they do, don't convert. BC brings just three out of the backfield, and they do not convert. Pass it. Leonard's shoestrings. So with five seconds left to go in this first half, Georgia Tech is going to have to punt the ball. Presley Harvin might be their best weapon as a punter. That's never a good thing except in situations like this. Jalen Gill back to receive it for BC, and Harvin just puts that big leg into it. Look at that kick. Gill has to call a fair catch at the 23, and that's why you have a guy like Harvin, and that's why you make those decisions to try and make something happen, because you know you got a punter who can put a big foot into it. We've reached the half here at Chestnut Hill. Boston College 34-14 over Georgia Tech. Tech's two turnovers, big time costly, one of them leading to a Mike Palmer return for a score. And that's really yeah, that, one of the big reasons why they've the got this three clock. touchdown advantage. Yeah, you know, this, this is the most points that Boston College has scored in the first half since they scored 44 at Syracuse last year. And uh, for more on Boston College, Co Kelsey is down with Coach on the sideline. Coach, you guys have been trying to place an emphasis on running the ball. You've got a, a season high already and a half. What's working for you? Well, it's, it's kind of like what I saw early on to start last week. I felt confident with it. The O-line's doing a great job of blocking. Our backs are hitting it, and it's been great so far. I think our offense has done an incredible job. You said you wanted them to take care of the ball this week. They have so far, and also you've cashed in on some of Georgia Tech's mistakes. What do you need to see from your team in the second half to continue that? Yeah, ball security is the key. we got to hold the ball. We can't give it to them. We almost sit on the one you saw. Luckily, our knee was down, and then you saw us rip the ball and score. We Need more of that coach thanks thank you 140 it's right here as we start the second half from chestnut hill austin kent puts his foot into it on the bounce it'll go into the end zone and through and boston college will start from their own 25. Send it down to Kelsey Riggs on the field. Kels? Well, I caught up with Coach Collins on his way out. He was frustrated. I asked him what he said to his team at the half. He said, it's penalties and turnovers, and it's killing us. Seven penalties in the first half, two turnovers for them in the first half. He said, we've got to eliminate them and clean things up. He said, we need to be the ones who are forcing turnovers and respond here in the second half. We cannot make the same mistakes. Yeah, Kels, we mentioned coming into this game, Georgia Tech has done a great job at forcing turnovers defensively. One of the top teams in the conference, but they also give it away at an alarming rate, and that's what they did in the first half. Nice play that time by Jordan Dominic on the stop. So a good start on first down for this Yellow Jacket defense. 
Yeah, Jordan Dominic, I think he's one of the bright spots just so far in this game defensively for Georgia Tech. Had a couple plays in that first half and obviously a big play there and forced a fumble in that fourth quarter of the Louisville game, that which they won. He's a good player for this team. He's, and he's a guy that, uh, as a redshirt sophomore, he's a guy who has more time in this system coming up in years to come. Play fake to Bailey. Dracovic over the middle. Tight end. Wide open. First down for the Eagles. Chris, you say wide open. And it really was wide open. I mean, he just continues to find this soft spot off play action in behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. And you never usually see Hunter Long making these spectacular catches because he is just so good at finding the open space. And Phil Dracovic is able to get his eyes off the play action downfield to him. Dracovic running it himself. Great fake for Dracovic. And a nice pickup before Wanye Thomas and Jamin Brooks downfield were able to make the stop. That was a fantastic fake. I mean, I, mean, I was faked watching me the out too. Back. I was watching the running back the whole time. But it, it, I think it's interesting. You watch Phil Dracovic's body relax just for a split second after he fakes it. And I think the defense can see it, and then he takes off and runs. And it's like right now we have a Georgia Tech player down on the field, Wanye Thomas. Is looking at his calf, and uh, hopefully we see him get up and walk off. And first and 10, Boston College, when we come back. Inside of Georgia Tech territory, Dracovic fakes to Bailey. Now he's going to run, has Bailey in front of him as a blocker and a lot of room inside the 35. And that's where he's driven out of bounds by Quez Jackson. Lots made of Dracovic's arm and his arm strength and his ability to throw the ball downfield. But when he takes off and runs like this, I mean, you're almost unable to play man-to-man -man coverage against it because he is so aware of the defensive back turn to him covering these wide receivers that it forces you to play zone it forces you to keep your eyes on him and that opens up a lot in the passing game downfield he's got 70 yards rushing so far today so nimble he'll score the rushing totals just keep piling on for Boston College. Well, Jeff Hafley went to David Bailey about three weeks ago. He found him sitting in the cafeteria. He went down, talked to him, and said, look, your day will come. Just be patient. You are a fantastic player. And there will be a game where you get 30, 40 carries in a game. I don't know if he's going to see that many today. But they handed the ball off, and they have a lot of confidence. And you see Hafley pat him on the helmet and said, look, I told you. And David Bill is a fantastic player, and that was that really did look easy, Chris. BC coming into this game averaging 66 yards rushing per game. This 34-yard romp from Bailey gives them 206 yards today. And they love bringing this seal block with Hunter Long ba back around the edge. And Hunter Long is such a receiving threat that, you know, they're almost covering him. They don't think he's going to block. But look, the defenseman covers him. He has no one to block, and it widens the edge of the defense so much that, you know, David Bailey is able to just do the rest. And, you know, people just bouncing off of him, try to arm tackle. You can't arm tackle a six-foot, 240-pound running back. Well, that has to be so nice for Frank Signetti to see and for, you know, Jeff Hafley to see because we mentioned it earlier, Mark. This is a Boston College team heading to Clemson next week. That'll be the noon game on ABC. They couldn't go down there to Death Valley just throwing the football and chucking it all over the yard. Now, they're going to have to do that down there, but they're going to have to keep the ball away from Trevor Lawrence in that Clemson offense. And in order to do that, they got to run the football. Yeah, you know, in terms of keeping Lawrence off the field and Travis Etienne, I mean, and Amar Rogers, I mean, you can't name all the guys that Clemson has, but you need to establish a run threat, even if it's just, look, we can run the ball. Look at our last game. Look at what we did, and it can open up play action pass because if a team doesn't honor you running the ball, they will not bite downhill. There will be no open seams for Hunter Long or Zay Flowers down the field, and I think Frank Signetti understands that. He understands that, look, we have a lead. Let's just run the ball and keep on putting that pressure on the next opponent to have to protect against it. 
Sims here showing his speed and quickness. Design quarterback draw in a big hole. Sims makes the most of it, getting the ball out to midfield for the Jackets. It seems is, I mean, it's the same way. Like, you know, he is so good at running the ball. I think he's obviously a more dynamic runner than Phil Djokovic. Uh, but, you know, he, he can't do it all on the ground. I think they're going to need to sprinkle in a little bit more. Number 21, Jameer Gibbs, get him out on some routes. And look again, Amarion Brown. I mean, you know, really big catch, big touchdown, but haven't gone his way much after that. Yeah, Gibbs has just nine yards on four carries. Right on cue, Brown with the catch. Short gain, though, as Matry was there to bring him down. Chris, I think what we've learned, I just need to say Amari and Brown's name more often because every time I say it, they throw it to him. <laughs> it has worked out that way, and it hasn't <laughs> been very often today, but when you have mentioned it, he's been on the receiving end. He's got three catches, had the big touchdown grab, but he's getting more involved today than we have seen him really all year long. Sims with time. Lots of time. Will he decide to run it? He does. Tries to avoid the tackle and cannot. It's a nice job coming up by Deion Jones from the safety spot to grab the ankle. Yeah, Deion Jones is a grad student. Transfer out of Maryland, but right there. That is a perfect example of what Boston College did not do last week versus Virginia Tech. They did not make open field tackles. Deion Jones showed right there how emphasizing it all week has paid off and leads to a third and four for Georgia Tech. Sims sprinting to his left, incomplete. Jalen Camp just couldn't squeeze it. Good coverage on the outside by Elijah Jones. Gotta be four down territory here for Tech inside of BC territory. Down big in the second half. Collins trying to work some magic. Ran a little return route with the Amari Brown a couple plays ago. See if they go back to that as Boston College shows pressure. Five seconds to snap the ball for the Jackets. BC comes with the pressure. High, and Carter goes up to grab it. Good catch by Malachi Carter, and that'll move the sticks. Great catch by Malachi Carter, and... Jeff Sims looked to the sideline as the sideline recognized that man-to-man -man coverage. They checked that route to just a quick slant on the outside, knowing it was going to be pressure. Really good job of climbing the ladder by Malachi Carter and coming down and picking up the first down and fourth. And Tech moves just like that, back five yards. That looks like big old Jordan Williams, the true freshman. Right tackle. Ball start offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty. First down. It was 6'6", 330 pounds from Gainesville. He's a civil engineer, so he works hard in the classroom all week long and Correction. on the football field. 5'57", ball star 57. Well, they got Minahan in the center, but it looked like Williams moved as well. You can't miss him when he moves. No, I mean, the big man. I mean, Jordan Williams, a true freshman playing right tackle. That's rare in college football, and they're happy to have him. Here's Gibbs. Boy, had a full head of steam who was just met in the hole. Isaiah McDuffie. Isaiah McDuffie, number 55, got that awesome eye block on that I love, but does a really good job of destroying the block, slips underneath of Leonard and comes up with the tackle. I mean, there is a reason why Max Richardson and Isaiah McDuffie started the day as number one and number two in the nation in total tackles. These guys are playmakers. Speaking of which, Gibbs has the ball in open space. We'll get enough for a first down, and Georgia Tech now putting together a nice little drive here of their own in the third quarter. I like it. I mean, I really like this by Jeff Sims, by this offense. You get you get run the ball, you check the ball down to Jamar, to Jameer Gibbs, throw the ball to Marion Brown, your big Malachi Carter. I mean, they have a lot of weapons on this offense, and they need to take some pressure off of this offensive line with this quick, short, underneath throw game. Sims is going to keep it. Wisely ducks his head as McDuffie was there to make the stop. But again, another nice pickup. And this is how Jeff Collins wanted this game to start for Georgia Tech. You know, who knows if it's a little too late now, but this is a good drive. Pressure coming, pressure coming. He's going to be dropped and hard. 
Jabuzi on Wuka. Just you can see Sims is shaking up because on Wuka, about 300 pounds just fell on top of him to complete that sack. And how nice is it to have Jabuzi on Wuka transfer in from Buffalo this year? And I think the first person there was Maximilian Roberts. Oh. Number four, another transfer out of Maine. And then on Wuka just falls on top of him. I mean, you know, when you look at Boston College defensively, you know, they went out to the transfer market and they really improved themselves on the defensive line. They have three transfers that make significant contribution on the defensive line. And I don't know if they would have been able to field a quality line without those transfers. Third and long will get a whistle before the snap and a timeout from Jeff Collins timeout. of Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, their first timeout of the half. 824 left in this third quarter. Tech trying to mount something offensive. D Mark, you mentioned the transfers. Jakovic, big part of this group, but a lot of players contributing today, transferring into BC. Yeah, we talked about Deion Jones made a good play a minute ago, but then Chibuzi on Wuka with the sack. Maximilian Roberts was in on there, and Luke Beckett. All the three of those contribute on that defensive front. And then the other Maximilian on the team, both Maximilians. The Maximilian sandwich again, Chris. We had a Maximilian sandwich a few weeks ago, another Maximilian sandwich in the backfield. That's Maximilian Richardson and Maximilian Roberts, both laying on top of Jeff Sims at the end of that play. Yes, yeah, Sims, unfortunately, for Tech fans, was the meat in the middle of that Maximilian sandwich, and that's not how they drew it up for the Jackets. Fourth and 19 this time. And this is a lot to chew, he, chew on here for Sims, but being down as much as they are, Tech's going to have to go for it. BC brings just three. Sims with all kinds of time. He's going to have to go deep into the end zone, and it's picked off. That's Palmer. Already has a fumble return for a score and brings this one out near midfield. Flags all over the place, as we've seen oftentimes this afternoon. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 97. 15-yard penalty, first down. Marcus Valdez, that is a big call against BC. Yeah, and, and Palmer's over in the corner getting looked at. It looks like he has a lower leg injury, but watch Valdez. Works back up in the pocket. The ball was thrown, and he just lowers his helmet and drives Sims to the ground. I mean, that's an easy call, and then a you know, good play on the back end. That, that's Elijah Jones, good play on the ball. Picked off by Palmer. He has to return it a long ways to just get back to the line of scrimmage, but Palmer looks like he either got cramp, a cramp or uh, is hurt. Fresh set of downs for Georgia Tech, so a big-time reprieve on fourth and 19. Here's Mason trying to get outside. Give him about four yards. Kelsey's down on the field. What do you see with Palmer, Kels? Yeah, Mark, it looks like maybe a cramp or a dead leg. No telling for sure, but they are stretching him out on the side. He just rolled over. He's moving both of his legs and looks like they're trying to work on it. Maybe test the strength of that leg, doing some strength tests um, on maybe a hamstring, Mark. Yeah, one of the things with this team, Mark, that we talked about during the week is they've had to play a lot of players in the secondary because of injury, and it benefits them in a situation like this as Mason puts his head down and gets close to that first down marker because... Even if they're without Palmer, they still have Deion Jones, who's back healthy now. Jamin Moose, Cam Arnold is a true freshman who's had some playing time. And they're also without Josh DeBerry, who was kicked out in the first half because of a targeting call. Whistle on the play before, before the snap, Sims could take Boston the snap. Boston College called timeout. Their first of the second half. Timeout quickly from BC, and company is... Tim Lukabu wants to talk things over. And just cardboard cutouts at Alumni Stadium. Mascot doing his job with a mask on. The red bandana, of course. Trying to keep Georgia Tech out of the end zone here. Mason. Just couldn't quite find the end zone, but a good run. Jones was there to make the stop for BC. Tech trying to go quickly. Mason, powering his way, can't get there. He'll be stopped at the one. It'll bring up second down and goal for the Jackets. 
This is an area where you, you, you got to imagine that Jameer Gibbs is your number one player. Give him the ball. Sims is going to keep it. And he does enough in that offensive line. Does enough to get him into the end zone. What a drive, Chris, by Georgia Tech. I mean, march down the field, take advantage of penalties, and you're able to punch it in. That's really from like the one and a half yard line. Really good push by this offensive line led by Mikey Minahan at center. Georgia Tech is hardly out of this game. I mean, a 21-point game with five minutes left in the third quarter. It's one, you know, one kickoff return by Jameer Gibbs away from being right back in this one. Gavin Stewart for the try. It is good. And the lead is down to 20 once again. College football continues tonight on the ACC Network at 8 o'clock. Virginia. So I, I had some questions about Notre Dame just coming into this season, how they were going to match the speed of the ACC. But they've been doing it in big boy football. Lots of runs. And Ian Book has developed and, and executed better and better as these weeks have gone on. Man, that's a nice play by Tariq Carpenter. It looked like Levy was going to have a lot of room. And Carpenter coming up from that safety spot to make the stop limiting what Levy was able to do on first down. you got to think BC, as effective as they've been running the football all day today, Mark, is just going to try and take a lot of clock off and run the football here against this Georgia Tech defense the rest of the way. Second and six is equal to run every single time so far in this game. Let's see if they can go back to it or play action. Play action is right. Tech getting some pressure, but now setting up the screen are the Eagles. Levy with room, and he'll pick up a first down. He gets popped, but not before enough to get the first down. You, you keep track of tendencies as the game goes along as an offensive coordinator, and you understand you get in a rhythm as a defense. Second and six, okay, they're running the ball. Let's play action and then throw it on a screen pass to a running back out in space. Really good hit at the end of the play. Three Carter, three Carpenter back to back. Good plays, but you know, good job by Frank Signetti in this offense, understanding his tendency and breaking the tendency and getting a first down. Play clock under five. Flowers in motion. It's a little confusion for Boston College as flags come flying. I believe he was able to pick up about four yards. Let's check the call. Illegal shift, offense. Players were moving before the snap and never got reset. Five yard penalty, first down. Lots of players. <laughs> yeah, they have lots of players. You know, it's okay for people to move, multiple people to move, but then you have to reset yourself for at least a second. And, you know, no one reset themselves. Zay Flowers continued in motion throughout the play, and, and that's why the penalty was called. First and 15 behind the chains. Yeah, behind the chains is BC. Now is this, here's this opportunity for Georgia Tech. Take advantage of this situation and get off the field. Flowers in motion. Now back to the top of your screen. Dracovic looking to throw. Steps up. Incomplete. Carpenter was in on it, as was Keenan Johnson. And Keenan Johnson is shaken up a little bit. Yeah, you saw two players on Hunter Long, the big tight end. I mean, when you are this targeted, number one targeted tight end in the country, we've said it a bunch of times, but you're gonna get double teamed. And uh, you know, Tariq Carpenter made a really good play on the ball. Unfortunately, Keenan Johnson is down on this play. Wonder where he does go down. Is that a wrist or a stinger? It looks like it could he's be holding a... his left arm. Yeah. Stinger usually you feel it go right away. Yeah, you, know, you feel like it's seen if he has strength in that arm. See yeah. it? Yeah. That's a, you know, there could be a situation where, you know, the arm kind of got stuck up in the rib and it was kind of stabilizing the arm. You know, I don't want to speculate at all, but sure. either way, you know, it, it was a good play and just kind of a, a kind of an odd way he went down to the turf after the play was over. I will say this, though, Mark, every week when we talk to players, 
they give us how they got hurt, and you're you, almost every single player, you say, yeah, I had that happen to me. <laughs> I mean, how many injuries did you go through in your college and NFL career? Every single little broken bone here, little pull there, little tear there. Yeah, well, you play football, and you just understand that by the end of your career, you're going to have every single one of your fingers is going to be broken, every single one of your toes is going to be broken, and that's just understood, and then you have a successful offseason when you don't have a surgery. I mean, that's just... That's the way you talk about your off seasons. Is oh yeah, no, it was a good good off season. Didn't have to undergo surgery. And uh, yeah, we talk about football being a physical sport. There's a hundred a hundred percent injury rate in the game of football. You're gonna be injured at some point. You just hope it's minor. And I was lucky to have minor injuries, but let's hope this one is minor as well. It's good to see him walk off the field. Yeah, good to see Keenan Johnson who was in on that play, talking to Coach Collins, walking off the field. Coach Collins gives a thumbs up. That's at least a good sign. Favoring that left shoulder, it looks, as you see the staff working with Johnson as he walks off under his own power. Georgia Tech is deep in the secondary. They play a lot of players. Most teams, almost every team, will have hockey lines, as they call it, shuffling guys in on the defensive front, but Tech will do that in the secondary, so... Yeah, it looks Nobody like ever Tobias, lost an injury. Yeah. Tobias Oliver has come in at that cornerback position. You might recognize his name as Tech fan because he was a quarterback last year. Switched over to defensive back number eight in the offseason. Second and 15. A give to Flowers. Thomas coming up to make the stop from his safety spot. And it'll bring up third down and long. It'll be interesting to see right now if Andrew Thacker and this Georgia Tech team brings pressure or if they sit back in coverage Phil Dracovic is fantastic against pressure he's the second best quarterback rating in the ACC when pressured so he is good at keeping his eyes downfield but on third and 11 I wouldn't be surprised if you get some Georgia Tech yellow jackets in the backfield Tech comes with just four Screen to Gill, and he's brought down by Georgia Tech in that defense. That's Tobias Oliver. You mentioned the former court. Every time you mention a player, he makes a play. <laughs> Oliver makes a play here, and he's going to get the football back to his offense. Hey, that's a pretty good tackle from a quarterback. Not a quarterback anymore, but you know, Tobias Oliver, he's best friends with Trey Swilling, number three on the other side. And, you know, he said Oliver, you know, quarterback last year, but he's a physical guy. He's fast. He's, he's a guy who knows the, the offense well, so he can understand and anticipate. Really good job bringing him down short of the sticks on that play. First punt of the game for Grant Carlson, and true freshman Nate McCollum awaits this punt. Let's see if another young player for Georgia Tech can make a play, and that's not the play they were looking for. Takes an eagle bounce. And that's a mistake that is going to cost Georgia Tech. They'll scrimmage from their own three. Kelsey has more on Tobias Oliver. What's going on, Kels? Hey, guys. Yeah, you were talking about Tobias and Trey, and, and something that Trey said that really caught my attention was his first day working out when you show up. You know, you want to see who the big guys are that you're going to go up against, who's really going to be competitive. And for him, that was Tobias from the beginning. He had a, a wristband on Trey did that says, all work, no luck. Then he walks in, sees, hey, there's Tobias Oliver also working out. So those two competitive. And he said he wanted him to switch over and play defense so they could go against each other because when he was a triple option quarterback, they couldn't work out much together. Sims from his own end zone. That's dangerous. And it was intercepted. Did he hang on to it? The officials are coming in. They say he did. That's John, John and Moose. Moose gets the pick. Yeah, John and Moose, the safety. I mean, he just sits on this route in the flat. And I think it surprises Jeff Sims a little bit. You see him right there, number eight. He buzzes out to the flat in this cover three type zone, three under three deep. Let's see if he controls the ball to the ground. He, he looked like it was bobbling a little bit, but he just buzzes out under this out route. Really good job. Yeah, the, the key will be whether he, he looked like his back hit the ground. The previous play is under further review. Did he hang on to it? You don't see it from that angle. 
the officials were consulting with each other on the sideline before making the call, which was an interception. So it'll have to be definitive evidence against that in order to overturn it. Steve McBride, our replay official, having a look. It's really interesting. You talk about coaching and how you know, malleable these young minds are. Last week versus Virginia Tech, multiple times, this little out route and that number one receiver towards the weak side was wide open because the flat defender didn't get far enough outside the numbers. Today, it was, ob it was obviously coached by Tim Lukabu over the week. It was executed perfectly by Jamin Moose on that last play. And if the call stands, that will result in an interception. And I mean, you, it's so fun to watch this college football because you can just see tangible progress week in and week out with these players. Really good execution defensively by Boston College. Still doesn't have it. That's what's in question right there, when it was yeah. up on his shoulder, Mark. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Stands as an interception. Another big turnover costing Georgia Tech. One fumble was returned for a score. Another one led to a really short field score from the Eagles, and now they'll have another short field to operate from. First interception turnover. of the game thrown, but boy, right. that's costly. You look at the negative three turnover margin today. I mean, it's just, it's so hard to win games when you are, you are minus three in that turnover margin. Levy just crashes into the pile. Georgia Tech now, Mark, has 18 turnovers this year in less than six games. Coming into the day, they had 15 turnovers, which ranked them 75th in the country. And remember, only 77 teams had played so far, so they were third from last with 15. I'm sure they're not going to climb the charts at all with three today. Kovic, this pressure, tried to get rid of it quickly, but can't connect with Flowers. Good job by Georgia Tech defensively, just continuously getting pressure on this series. And anytime you're backed up, you, you, you look at third downs as four-point plays. If you stop the offense on this play and hold them to a field goal and not a touchdown, that's four-point swing in your direction. That would be huge for Georgia Tech if they can stop them short on third and seven. Levy stays in the block. Tried to get to Lewis and defended that time by Walton. Do we have a flag? We do. Let's check the laundry. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 92. Half the distance to the goal penalty, automatic first down. You know, that might be your four-point play right there, Mark. Yeah, it is. You know, Jaquan Griffin. Oh, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's about three seconds after the ball is thrown. Not a smart play. Half the distance to the goal. First and goal for BC, and it also means they can work on that clock. Give to Bailey. Bounces off the first tackler and into the end zone. Well, it's getting scrappy down there. A lot of, a lot of Georgia Tech players coming in, and uh, doesn't look like Boston College wants any of it. But, I mean, David Bailey, a lot was made of him before this season. He was the backup to A.J. Dillon, 800-plus yards rushing last year as the number two. Has not gotten the ball much this year. But two touchdowns on the day, and both physical physical runs if boston college is able to continue getting this run game going they are going to be dangerous and already 48 points put up in this game i can't remember the last time boston college put up points like this bumeri completes the try 47 21 bc they run for 221 yards 
in this game and you, you keep reiterating how much trouble they've had establishing the run and they've gone away from it Frank Signetti has tried in the first half of games that we've called for them Mark and they've just said it's not having the success we'd like to have let's just throw it because we're having more success throwing it well today here you see what these three men have done and you throw Dracovic in there because he has a career high 70 yards rushing yeah I mean it's crazy and they thought they saw a little bit of it last week for Virginia Tech they they saw Garwo pop a few runs but then Garwo fumbled on on one of the opening drives and so that the turnovers you know fumbling the ball really deters an offensive coordinator from calling your number in the run game and you know that early fumble by Bailey that was then overturned and and, and ruled not a fumble I mean that that play right there was huge in terms of the confidence that Signetti has in continuing to call the run and 221 yards on the ground I mean this looks like Boston College in terms of statistically from last year we got a quadruple header of women's Olympic sports coming your way tomorrow at noon. Wake Forest and Duke in field hockey. 1.30, Notre Dame and Louisville in women's soccer. Then a volleyball doubleheader involving ranked teams. Number six versus number ten, Louisville and Pitt. And then Virginia Tech and Duke at 5.30. A full day of football today. Don't forget Virginia and Miami coming up next. And then a full day of Olympic sports tomorrow on the ACC Network. Got a change of quarterback for Georgia Tech. as this might be the time that Sims takes a little bit of a breather and James Graham who was the quarterback of note last year for this Georgia Tech team now in to take some snaps yeah James Graham had a you know, pretty successful season last year as the quarterback I think he was successful through the air ran the ball a little bit but he was the more of the dual threat quarterback where you know, Tobias Oliver was really the shotgun sweep right sweep left quarterback Graham put that right in Malachi Carter's bread basket and he couldn't squeeze it you know, this is a tough learning lesson for Jeff Sims you know he's still a, he's a young player a very talented player a, you lose some of these I mean it just happens in football you lose a lot of them unless your name's Trevor Lawrence like this happens to you uh, and you know, he understands last week, obviously, it was a, a, a devastating week for confidence. You played Clemson, you got beat by a million points. And now, you know, a couple turnovers in this game, and you just got to make sure you keep that confidence high. You got to go out there. There's another football game next week for Jeff Sims. Graham flushed out of the pocket, just has to throw that one away. Fourth down and two for Georgia Tech. What I really want to see right now, you know, I see Jeff Sims on the sideline kind of peeking over guys. Yeah, gosh, man, I would just I just would love to see some coaches coming up to him, some guys coming up to him and giving him some encouragement. Because it, you know, it's a lonely feeling. It's a lonely feeling as a quarterback or any player getting benched after a lackluster performance. Harvin has averaged 53 yards on two punts today, and that one isn't gonna do much to hurt that average. Another punt of 50 yards for Presley Harvin. But it hasn't been a game of field position that would certainly benefit Georgia Tech with that punting game. Boston College has just scored far too often. They've controlled the ground game, controlled the time of possession, and turned three turnovers from Georgia Tech into touchdowns. And there's your lead. That's why they've got the big lead they have at the end of the third quarter here. As far as Boston College is concerned right now, I, you, I, I want to stay... You know, relatively conservative, but I want to open up my playbook a little. You know, I, you still treat Phil Dracovic as a freshman quarterback. You want to run the ball. You want to be safe with the football. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see some plays that aren't normally called by Frank Signetti. You know, you have a good lead. You tell your quarterback, look, you know, I'm going to do a, something a little bit different in this fourth quarter. I'm going to test you a little bit, test your reads and coverage, and maybe hand a little bit more of those reins. Fired up, got me fired up. Wanted to go. Kovic needed to be a little more fired up on that pass. Didn't have enough on it to Levy. <laughs> Levy was like, I just fired everybody up. I was ready to take it to the distance. Now you're like, come on. Ankles. Did you hear my speech? My speech said, give me the ball on a screen pass, and I'm going to the house. Jacobus had a good day. 12-20 throw in the football, 139 yards. 
Couple of touchdowns, no picks, 70 yards on the ground. But how about the fact that he only has 20 attempts? I mean, he had 51 attempts last week, and that just shows how effective the running game has been so far today. Long in motion, Tech showing a little pressure here with Curry. They come with it. Again, Jakovic is low, but talk about dominant hands. That's what Thacker, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, said about Hunter Long. Look at these hands. Yeah, they're dominant and they're soft. I mean, he's able to go low and just scoop that off the field, off the turf. And as Boston College goes long, I mean, Georgia Tech's trying to substitute, but but you, you see his ability to squeeze the ball right Time when he out. touches his hands. Boston College. And uh, you know, that's what makes Hunter Long so good. You know, Yes, he's got good body position. Yes, he can do a lot in the run game, but when he makes the plays with his hands out. like that, put the, I played many years against Jason Witten, and he uh, dominated me on many occasions, I, might, yeah, I, might, I must admit, but a lot of it is, too, is not just not him beating you with speed or great, you know, finesse. It's his ability to utilize his body in a great way, and uh, I think Hunter Long is just a fantastic player. He, you know, obviously, Jason Witten has had a Hall of Fame career. I don't know if he's at that point yet, obviously, but he has the ability to develop into that Witten-type tight end at the next level, and he doesn't just play football, Kelsey. Uh, he does something else in, the, in his spare time as well. Yeah, Mark, uh, you know, people look at him and they say, okay, yeah, he's definitely an NFL guy. I don't think you look at him and say, oh, he's definitely a computer guy. But I'm not just talking about he's good at computers, good at building computers. He has built <laughs> five different computers. Started when he was 13, taught himself how to do it. Uh, Cotter, I feel like you need a friend like that to build you computers, to help you with the computer problems. Maybe that's Mark for you. I don't know. I mean, I, Mark does help me with it, but if I had a computer like that, again, I, he could build it, but he would also have to show me where how to turn it on. <laughs> it's obviously a lot more complex than the old, you know, Apple IIe or whatever that is on the right. That back from my my days. <laughs> That's but, what yeah. you still have. You still have that. <laughs> That's why I need Hunter there. Long here. But With, he probably would look at that and say, I don't know how to turn on this big box. What's this let floppy just, disk thing? Let me replace this with my own computer that I built yesterday. Fumble on the play. Graham puts it on the turf. And is it another turnover? Big Chabuzi on Wuka came up with it. The ruling on the field, the runner's college. elbow was down before he lost They're his ruling that third down. James Graham was down. Graham coming in. This is his second series at the quarterback spot for Tech. See if he was Jeff Sims not down. injured. Just, yeah, let's see if he was down. Looks like that elbow was down. Yep. Sims not injured, for those of you who may have stepped away. Just, uh... At least not that we know of or saw. Just giving Graham some look here in the fourth quarter. Jameer Gibbs in the backfield with him. There's Sims. Graham dangerously gets it to Gibbs, though. And look at that speed. Wow. 20. Just put it in another gear, Mark, to get it down to the 10. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that... You pulled the right trigger on your controller, and he just speed burst right past the, you know, that's a risky play, but look at this. He, I mean, he just is moving at a different speed than everybody else in the field. That was, let's see if he was down before this flip, though. Looks like the knee was down before the ball was released. Yeah, may have had both knees down. The ruling on the field is a run for a first down. The previous play is under further review. The way it's gone for Georgia Tech tonight, maybe the play. Jerry Magalanis letting us know that the call was reversed, that Graham was down before he pitched it to Jameer Gibbs. And like I said, we were going to break. It's just the way the night has gone for Georgia Tech. Play of the night is called back. Yeah, play is called back, and it does, doesn't take away anything from just you know, watching the physical ability of Jameer Gibbs when he gets the ball in his hands. Boston College defensively has done, done a really good job of containing him all night. Donica Sanders in motion. Now back out to the bottom of the screen. Pressure coming. Gets it to Gibbs. Cuts it back. Still on his feet. He gets hammered, but not after a big game on fourth down to keep the ball in possession with the Jackets. Yep. Yeah. 
Tim Lukabu brought pressure. He, you know, he brought everybody on the blitz, and usually when this type of pressure happens, if the back flares, the defensive end is responsible. That would have been Maximilian Roberts. Looks like he blow, blew coverage on that play. Big pickup for Georgia Tech. Graham just running for his life. Gets it to Cam. Inside the 10. Matry on the stop. So Georgia Tech getting a little bit of movement here in the fourth quarter offensively. And Boston College's backup linebackers in right now. John Lamont, Joe Sparacio had a bunch of bunch of playtime last year, but they've moved to this 4-2-5 defense. No room for a third linebacker. The option to Gibbs, not, not a whole lot of room out there on the outside. Maximilian Roberts on the stop. Georgia Tech getting some other players time as well on that offensive line. William Lay now at center. There's Zach Quinney, th three-year starter, number 73 for Georgia Tech. Said he weighed 260 when Jeff Collins got there. That ain't going to get it done. That left tackle in the ACC, so we had to put on a lot of weight. Which he has successfully done. Job coming up and making the tackle with Sheeta Salah from that end spot, grabbing a hold of Gibbs' jersey. <laughs> it kind of, you say a lot of weight. I don't think people understand what a lot of weight means. It, he put on 60 pounds. 60 <laughs> pounds. He said, How did you do that? He said, I ate a ton of ice cream. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it to you. But uh, five, six meals a day. He said it was painful. Like he wanted yeah, to painful. quit eating. And no, you got to eat some more. Sit back down, son. Third and goal for Graham. This time sprinting out to his left. Has a receiver. Brown just couldn't quite squeeze him at the goal line. Probably would have come up a little bit shy of the pylon. But it'll bring up fourth and goal. Yeah, bring up fourth and goal. Really, yeah, really good throw by Graham. Good play design out of the pocket. Rolling out to his left. Making that throw on the money. And Marion Brown's kicking himself for not catching that. See if Boston College brings pressure again. They brought it on that last fourth and seven. Now it's fourth and nine and a half. BC showing pressure up the middle. If you show pressure up the middle and then they check the play, don't back out. Stay up in the line of scrimmage. They already know you're blitzing. Jeff Collins saw the play clock timeout. winding down. Called Georgia a timeout. Tech, their second timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Mark, as we keep it here, you know, it's a big lead for Boston College, especially the way they've been able to run the football. I would think they'd be able to salt this one away. You know, a lot of people call it garbage time, but both these teams have things they got to work on here in this quarter, don't they? Yeah, they do, and I think red zone defense is one of the areas that Boston College wants to work on, and Tim Lukabu is talking to his guys here. You know, this fourth and goal play, it's big for just confidence moving forward to the next, next, uh, next game, and same thing for, for Jeff Collins and his offense. I mean, you, they, they're ranked 67th in red zone offense coming into this game. And being able to drive this one down the field and put it in the end zone, I mean, you take little wins at this point when you're down this much. Fourth and goal for James Graham and this Georgia Tech offense. Looking to the corner. We got a flag on the play. Marquez Ezard was the intended receiver, and it looked like Brandon Sebastian may have had a hold of him as he was trying Pass to make his move to the corner. Defense, number 10, the foul occurred in the end zone. Will be first down and goal at the two yard line. And that's a good play. It's a good play by Ezard. He had understanding that. He has a guy on him, go up, try to make a play on the ball. And dude, that's, that's one of the things that's happening right now in football. You On the fourth down plays, you throw the ball up in the air. And you used to say, when you throw the ball, you know, three things can happen and two of them are bad. But with all the pass interference penalties that have been called lately, now it's two of them are good. Give to Brown. It waltz into the end zone for his second score of the night. We 
talked earlier about how Boston College, almost to a man, all of their players and coaches said number two is the guy we got to circle and watch where he is at all times on the field because he can just score every time he touches the football, and he's done it twice tonight. And for Georgia Tech and Dave Patino, the offensive coordinator, he admitted to us, Mark, you just got to find a way to get him the football. Yeah, you do. You just got to find a way to get him the football. And you, you talked about extra points. Chris, beginning of the game, and they're not sure things. That one was missed. But, yes, get get Brown the football. He'll score touchdowns and good drop. Tafley was co-offensive coordinator at Ohio State last year. But before that, Mark, secondary coach at San Francisco, Cleveland, Tampa Bay. Tim Lukabu, also an NFL guy. As Georgia Tech tries the onside kick, and they get it. So they failed the first time they tried onside. This time they pick it up, and now let's just see what happens. Wanye Thomas is shaken up a little bit on the play. Yeah, and I have Wanye Thomas. It looks like he's in extreme pain, and yeah, I guess it's the second time they went for the onside kick. They, they, they kicked a different type of onside kick. This one was successful in a way. He got the football back, but got a looks like a very painful injury to one of your players, but. Yeah, we were talking just as that kick was happening of all the, the, the coaching experience in the NFL, and that just comes from Halfley. He brought that with him, and his experience is... Tech safety, Wanye Thomas, who made a spectacular play on that onside kick to recover it, shaken up on the play. He did walk off on his own power, so that's good news. Also good news for Tech as they made the recovery, so now down 21 with the ball again in BC territory. Graham keeps it and avoids the loss and actually gets a nice little pickup of about seven yards on first down. Let's see that onside kick and where Wanye Thomas got hurt. Tech wants to move quickly. We'll, yeah, we'll see it here in a little bit. We don't have time. Yeah, we don't have time. Graham quickly to the outside. That's Adonica Sanders. Tries to keep his feet and does, but he's brought down up for a first down though so here comes tech they're down 21 here mark if they move quickly could somehow find a way to put this in the end zone you still got a game yeah absolutely i mean you're a three score game nine minutes left i mean covering onside kicks you got a chance graham now using a block from smith inside the 20. got a flag down behind the play maybe a face mask i think on Boston College. Holding offense, number 28, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, I'm not I even close. I mentioned Smith was out in front of the play and he held. That's gonna back the Jackets up. Let's see if we see it here. We're right there on McDuffie. The bicep cool. official was right there to throw the flag. To Shard Choice, running back's coach, having a word with Smith on the sideline. Choice was a great player at Georgia Tech himself. They've got four coaches. Actually, they got six coaches if you include volunteers and graduate assistants that played here at Georgia Tech. First and 20 for the Jackets. Watch out, blitz coming. Ram does get rid of it and complete. Yeah, that's going to be a and flag. And now we'll get some, yeah, we'll get some late malfeasance against Sebastian. That'll add more yardage after Sanders makes the catch. Yeah, you can't DDT someone after the whistle blows. I mean, that's just, that, you can't do that. And you got to have your ears open as a defender. And After the play, you know, personal the foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 10. 15-yard penalty, first down. Sebastian, you know, veteran on this team, is a redshirt junior, been here for a while, and it's a physical play, but it's not the right time to have that type of physicality, and it extends this drive, and you, know, you see Boston College, they after that last touchdown and the recovery of the onside kick, you see number 14, Max Richardson and Isaiah McDuffie right back on the field. I mean, you know, Tim Lukabu and, and Jeff Hafley understand that this game is not over yet. Graham going for Sanders in the end zone, makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Sebastian again defending on the play.
Good job by Sebastian not to double down on penalties. A little contact at the top of the route, but then got his hands off and really been impressed with how Graham has conducted this offense. Coming off the bench cold, hasn't played all year. Give the Gibbs. Richardson there all day long. Yeah, that's a sure tackle. That that's the time where you can wrap the guy up and throw him to the ground. That, that was a that was a really good play by Maximilian Richardson on a really good running back in the backfield, forcing third and long. And it's four down territory for this Georgia Tech team, I have to believe. Coach Collins and Dave Patno, the offensive coordinator, trying to dial something up for James Graham. Third and 13. DC comes with five now. Graham gets rid of it. Incomplete. Camp was the intended receiver. Elijah Jones on the coverage. Now fourth and 13 for the Jackets. Yeah, fourth and 13. And field goal is not going to do you any good in this situation. You got to go for this play. I wouldn't be surprised to see some stacks or maybe a little motion to try to find Marion Brown downfield. See him lined up to the right of the quarterback in that slot Tech. position. Tech's two for three on fourth down today. Graham looks to the sideline with Mason in the backfield with him. Play clock at five. Tech with just one timeout left on the board. They're going to have to burn it here. Timeout, Georgia Tech. The third and final timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Well, if you don't convert here, Mark, it's over anyway, so you might as well burn it and make sure you get the play you want and need here. Yeah, and, you know, it's the right call by Jeff Collins to call that timeout. You come out in the formation you like. You see what Boston College is lined up defensively. It looks like Boston College was showing pressure in man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And so you know you got to get the ball out of your hands quickly. So you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come line, out, line up in that same formation. If it's the same defensive alignment, look for a quick pass on the outside to try to get the ball in your playmaker's hands and have you know maybe break a tackle or play off a block to pick up the first down. More of a max protection formation and now they're motioned back out to that three by one formation. BC brings just three, spying on Graham. He tries to pick it up himself and won't even come close. Yeah, Shea you know, Salah the, was there to bring him down. That's it. Yeah, and that's the you know, situation, James Graham, you know, just not having played a lot this year. It's better to, it's, honestly, it's better to turn the ball over and throw it towards the end zone in that situation because if you get stopped short, it's a turnover anyways. And so you just got to give your guys a chance in that, in that situation and... They're down three scores as Kovic takes the field with seven minutes left. You know, I got to imagine that after that little brief scare that Georgia Tech gave them, they're going to hand the ball off a lot on this drive. Bailey in the backfield. Georgia Tech with no timeouts on the board, so... Boston College is more than happy to let the clock run. Virginia, Miami coming up tonight. Our prime time presented by Geico game. If you haven't seen him yet. The Eric King is exciting in Miami. Looks like they are clearly on their way back with a lot of really good young talent. Virginia has some good young talent too, especially this kid at receiver, man. Be fun well, to Lavelle watch. Davis? Oh, oh yeah. I love Lavelle Davis. I, I love know. the guy. If they can get their quarterback situation straightened out, they've had so many injuries at that QB spot with Virginia, so we'll keep an eye on that when they kick tonight. LaBelle Davis, a true freshman wide receiver, six foot seven. And he can go <laughs> up and he, he, he makes plays. Like, you know, he's six yeah. foot seven just standing there in front of you, but he can jump out of the building too and has strong hands. He's going to be a dynamic player. And as you said, you'll. 
they, they are they are very uh, limited in terms of their quarterback situation right now. Obviously, Bryce Perkins gone. They had Brennan Armstrong start out the year. He got injured, and Lavelle Stone came in. I don't, don't know his status for the game, but it's going to be it's going to be interesting for Virginia offensively. Pitch to Levy. Wes Jackson forcing him out of bounds. Trey Swilling was there as well. Well, tonight after that Virginia-Miami game, join the huddle. They're going to break down the news of the day from all of our ACC football games. Tonight at 11 o'clock or right after that Miami game on the ACC Network. Also, Wake Forest with an impressive win today over Virginia Tech. We have them next week. Wake Forest and Syracuse, Mark. Yeah, well, yeah, what a make of, uh, of, of Wake Forest. And you know, they have so many guys who, who should be playing for them, who aren't playing for them. Jamie Newman obviously transferred to Georgia, then decided to opt out. Sage Surratt opted out before the beginning of this season. And Sam Hartman, their backup quarterback, he's been playing well so far. So uh, I'll have to go back and look at that film versus Virginia Tech because Virginia Tech has looked like a tough team to beat after Boston College played them last week and got dominated. Yeah, interesting day in the ACC today. Jordan and the crew will have highlights of all the games. Clemson was pushed early before eventually becoming Clemson again at home. North Carolina, NC State, that rivalry game earlier in the day. Carolina bouncing back from their loss last week. Notre Dame looked really impressive over Pitt. Pitt, if nothing, Mark, is a really good defensive football team, and Notre Dame had their way with them today. Yeah, they did. That long run by Dracovic there moments ago, 27 yards. He has 94 yards on the ground on seven carries in this game. That'll work. As a team, as a team, they have 200. They came in averaging 66 yards a game. They're almost at 266 now in this game running the football. And they're averaging 6.7 yards per carry. I mean, that's even even better stat than, than you know just the 260. And that's on 40 carries. Anytime you can run the ball 30 times or more, you know you are in a successful position as an offense. BC doing exactly what they wanted to do on this drive, too. Chewing up that clock with the full knowledge that Tech has no timeouts left and no way to stop it. Kind of reminds me of their first game of the season and their win versus Duke at Duke. At a 14-play drive, which looked a lot like this drive just pounding the ball over and over again to run the clock out better days ahead for Jeff Sims that's for sure true freshman quarterback for Georgia Tech and a lot of young players on this team and a lot of young players on both these teams as we said in the open two upstart programs that are heading in the right direction both from a player personnel standpoint, culture standpoint, just going to take a little while, especially for Tech. Bailey dropped in the backfield. It'll bring up fourth down for BC, and Grant Carlson to come in to boot this one away and pin Georgia Tech deep. Nate McCollum, another true freshman, back for the Jackets. There he is. Young man out of McDonough, Georgia, south of Atlanta. McCollum will let this one bounce, and it bounces into the end zone for a touchback. As we were talking, don't forget, coming your way a little bit later, ACC Network Prime Time Football presented by Geico, Virginia and Miami. They'll kick at 8 o'clock right here on the ACC Network. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. I imagine we'll probably send it to studio for a few minutes. Jordan and Mac Lane, EJ, Coach. Have a few minutes to get you caught up on everything that's happened today in the league before sending it out to Miami and Virginia. Shake of the head from Gibbs. It has not been the kind of day he envisioned coming into this one. Yeah, no, it, it really hasn't. And 
Yeah, you know, for, for, for Coach Collins at Georgia Tech, I mean, he told us this week, he said, you know, it was tough. After that last game, guys had their heads down, they were sulking. And he sent a text at 5.47 a.m. out to his leadership council on Tuesday after that lo tough loss to Clemson. It was a kind of lengthy text. He said, you know, always remember leadership isn't always holding each other accountable for negative behaviors and negative habits. It's also uplifting others and setting the right energy level for high performance right off the jump and affecting your teammates positively. And I think it's going to be that same sentiment for him with his team after this loss is, look, we did some good things. We, we have some bright spots. Let's look at the positives. Let's learn from the negatives. And we have another game of football to prepare for against a very, very tough team next week. So you, know, you, need to, you need to keep instilling some positivity amongst your players, especially after a lackluster performance two weeks in a row. Graham was second and ten, under two minutes to go here in Chestnut Hill. Getting his most significant play in time since last year. That's a nice move by Dante Smith. That's why they call him 2K Tay. <laughs> Hit the 2K button. Tay. Jukes. He's talking about it. It's like you, you push down on that, that joystick trigger and he just makes people miss. But they, have a, they have a bunch of running backs that are really good on this Georgia Tech team. Didn't all get to be... Uh, highlighted this game as Boston College did a pretty good job of stopping the run for the most part, but they still have some, some leftover guys from that triple option offense and have some, obviously some great young players led by Jameer Gibbs. Incomplete. Ezra, the attended receiver. Elijah Jones on coverage. Yeah, Jemias Griffin didn't even make the trip. Sophomore out of Rome, Georgia. But they did have Jordan Mason back. So you think about it when everyone gets healthy, to your point. Jameer Gibbs, special freshman. Jordan Mason, the veteran, he's a redshirt junior, had almost 900 yards rushing last year in the last couple of years. It's a big part of this running game for this team. Dante Smith is that change of pace back. And Jemias Griffin, if he's in, you know, in place, that's a, that's a good room. Harvin, it's everything he's got into it. Forces yet another fair catch from Jalen Gill. Let's take a look at what BC's got coming up on the schedule. And Coach Halfley will go back to the drawing board and plan for the number one team in the country <laughs> on the road on Halloween hey, at Clemson. Strange things happen on October 31st. I mean, you, never, you never know what spookiness is going to be out there, but uh, playing at Clemson, I think you know, it's going to be really one of the first times that Boston College has had a crowd in the stands. A lot of cardboard cutouts in these stands today, but I mean Clemson's been getting some noise going in that in that stadium in Death Valley, and always a tough place to play, especially this year. And they are rolling. Got Notre Dame on the schedule, as Jordan and the crew will tell you. Louisville is going to be a tough out in the second half of the year, and maybe they woke up a little bit today. They look good today, so. You know the kind of talent and explos explosive, uh, explosiveness they have on offense. And the defense tackled well, too, Chris. The defense yeah. tackled well. I mean, that was... If, if they miss tackles like they did last week versus anyone in the ACC, you're not going to win. But they were sure in tackling. They're, I know that's going to be probably the biggest takeaway that Jeff Halfley has after this game is that, look, we tackled well, we ran the ball well, and that combines for winning performances. Jeff Collins and the crew will head back to Atlanta. They've, placed, uh, they've played Clemson, Boston College, and they will play Notre Dame next week in Atlanta on ABC at 3.30. And as we just mentioned, Boston College on the road to take on Clemson. Our final score tonight, 48-27. Boston College with the win over Georgia Tech. Hunter Long had a big night, blocking as much as receiving as 